Hello and welcome to video number four in our Pagim RPG series. In this video, we're going to implement both jumping and the movement animations. In the last video, we were actually supposed to do the jumping, but uh, we kind of ran out of time, so I'm going to do both in the, our video today, hopefully. So we're going to move a little fast, okay? We have a lot of content to cover, so let's get right into it. All right, so here's our files from last time, okay? Enemy, game, ground, and player. So let's just open up our game and player. We will be coding for today. Okay. So here's our game file and here's our player file. Now let's go ahead and make a new function in here called jump. Okay. And jump takes a parameter self. Okay. And jump is actually going to be pretty simple. So I'm just going to leave this empty for now and we're actually going to take a look at something else first. I need to sort out these variables here a bit. They're a bit too spread out and they look too messy, okay? So I'm just gonna fix these up a bit first, okay? Because uh, when you have so much code, it's important to keep them formatted, okay? Uh, player info, okay? And player constants. And I'll make a new one called player movements. Again, it's totally up to you how you choose to format yours, okay? This is just the way I want to do it. So I'll make a variable here called self.jumping, okay? And assign it a value false. Then I'll make a new one called self.running and make it false. Okay, now what are these two? These two are variables that I'm going to be keeping for tracking the state of the player, whether he's jumping or running. Okay, these are two variables that we're going to use when adding the jump and the running mechanics. Okay, so this is important. So let me come back down here, okay, to our jump function. And you see, again, I told you before in the last video that uh, if you just do the acceleration, velocity, and uh, entire gravity system once, it makes things a lot easier later on. And I'll prove it right here. I'll make the value of the velocity is equal to minus 12. Or let's go with minus 15. Okay, and let's see what happens actually. Uh, I'll save this, okay. Go back to our game file and come down here. And here we have the event.type is equal to key down. We're gonna add our first key type over here, our first key handling. So what key should we keep for the jump button? Well, uh, I like to keep the jump button as space. Okay, so I'm gonna do that. I believe it's if event.key is equal to uh, key space, then call the player dot jump function. Okay, now let's run this code. Okay, slight mistake there. Okay, it looks like we made a slight mistake when we rearrange uh, our variables. Okay, so the problem right here is that self dot pos is not declared as of yet. So you know what? Let's just go ahead and change it a bit so that um, I should just maybe assign them directly over here like this hopefully hopefully that'll work and yep good okay so we're moving and there's the jump that was surprisingly simple and easy right you just had to declare the velocity as minus 12 it's, it makes sense you press jump and you want a vertical velocity because you're jumping upwards of course, there are a lot more uses of this system. You can use this to create a sort of power-up system as well, where maybe the player, uh, he moves d twice as fast. And you can do this really easily. You just need to double his acceleration or something. That's all it takes. Uh, so yeah, and I will actually take a look at power-ups and magic spells like this later on. So yeah, this is pretty good. But I just want to point out one slight problem here. Watch this. I can double jump then that's because we don't have any restriction on the jumping. You see? So there's a slight problem. So we need to fix that first before we move on to the movement animations. So here's the main code. Basically, I'm going to say if self.jumping is, is equal to false, OK, because I don't want the player to be running in midair. OK, that's just going to be weird. OK, so uh, if it's false, if the player is on the ground and he's not jumping, then what I want you to do is, uh, if the velocity, this is an, another check, if the velocity, 
self dot well dot velocity. If the horizontal velocity is greater than zero, then do this. If it's else, if self dot well dot x is less than zero, okay, then do this. Okay, so what am I doing here? Basically, uh, how am I going to determine whether the player is pointing in the left direction or the right direction? So I'm basically using the velocity to actually check that over here as a you know, good technique. And actually, now that you think about it, there's actually one more variable that I should be making. It's called uh, self.direction. Okay? And I'll set this by default to right. We're going to be using this later on as well in the attack functions. Okay? So just uh, roll with it for now. Okay, so over here I want to do is that if the velocity is greater than zero, that means the player is moving where? Towards the right. Okay, so that means I want to use the right animations, the right movement animations. So I'll do self.image is equal to, um, what's it called? Animation right. Uh, so I'll put move frame over here. And it's that's self dot move frame, okay? Okay, and now what? Let's copy this over here, put this over here, and say animation left. And over here, I'm gonna increment self dot move frame. So every time the walking function is called uh, and these conditions are fulfilled, the move frame will be incremented by one. And we have this little check up here to ensure that it never goes past six, okay? Because if it did, then there would be an error. Okay, so one more thing. Over here, I want to set the direction. And this is going to be useful later on, okay? I guarantee you. Um, okay, which direction is this? The right. And which direction is this one over here? Left. Okay, great. Now, let's run the code and see what happens, okay? Wait, wait, is this walking function even going to be called? No, I don't think so. That's a bit of a problem. Where do you call it? Hmm, okay. You know what? For this, I'm going to make a new function. It's going to be called uh, update, okay? And this is going to be an uh, important function for the player in which, in which I'm going to call all of these important functions that need to be called every second. Every frame, I mean. Uh, this is a common game technique, by the way. You make an update function, and then uh, all the functions that need to be updated in every frame are called in here. Okay, this is useful because uh, our, we're not going to go into our game and then make so many different uh, f function, you know, f function lines for each, uh, f for each function, right? Like over here, I'm going to write player.move, player.walking. How many functions, how many, how many function calls am I going to include in here? So it's best to actually just remove these, okay? Let's just remove all these and put them in here. Okay, this is a lot more neater. Okay, and I'll just go over here, for instance, and call just one function, player dot update. Okay, now hopefully everything should be good. Nope, I made a mistake. I know what it is still, so that's good. Images. I keep forgetting this. When I first made the game, I did not actually have this, so I'm actually paying for it now. Again, I'm, uh, this is actually the newer version of my web series on the website. So it's a lot more, it's a lot newer, and I actually have it a lot more updated. And let's just try and sort this out a bit. And by the way, if you actually are interested in the web version, okay, uh, there's links in the description below. So you can go check that out if you want to, okay? And I think this looks good. We sorted it out a bit. Okay, save. Let's go back, run, and hopefully this should work. Nope, still one problem. Ground group is not defined. Okay, of course. Uh, how am I going to do that? How am I going to deal with this? So one way, okay, so maybe you didn't understand the problem, but what's going on over here is that ground group over here, if you look at the collision function, I'm supposed to pass a group into it, ground group. Remember we did this, I think, in video number two, or actually in the, in the last video. But the problem is here that the update function has no access to this. 
So maybe we'll just go ahead and do it like this. Okay, I'll go here and pass the ground group into it. Okay, like this. Okay. It's a bit annoying because I'm only using it for one function, but uh, I think we can pass this off over here. Okay. And anything else? Okay, look at that. Isn't that interesting? Well, the movement seems pretty good, honestly. Yep, that's better than I expected, actually. Uh, but there's one problem. I don't know why he's actually running like that. So that's something I have to figure out. Okay, let's go back and figure that out now. Luckily, this has an easy fix. Remember that self.jumping variable that we created earlier in the player class, right over here? So we're going to be using this now. Self.jumping is meant to store the state of the player when he's jumping or not. Okay, so what we're going to do here is that in the jump function, I'm going to say self.jumping is equal to true. Okay, this is step one. We need to basically, when the jump function is declared, the value of self.jumping must be true. Okay, now when does the player stop jumping? Like if he jumps when we activate the jump function, when, when is that trigger that happens when he stops jumping, when he's not in the air any, any longer? Well, for that is, we uh, have the collision function. Basically, when the player touches the ground again, when he collides with the ground again after having jumped, then that's basically the point where uh, he's not jumping anymore, right? He's not in a state of you know, jumping. He's not in the air. So over here, I'll write self.jumping is equal to false, okay? So this is our triggers for activating it and deactivating it. And now we're going to just add in one single if condition. If self.jumping is equal to false, then I want you to, 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 to do this. So basically, it's only going to make the player jump if the player is not already jumping. Pretty short and simple, right? Let's try running this code now. Okay, yep, I can double jump. I can only do single jumps now, as intended. Now let's begin with the movement code, okay? So I'll go back to player, okay, and I'm gonna make a new variable here called self.moveFrame is equal to zero. This is basically responsible for keeping track of the frames for the movement of the player, okay? Because that's how animation works, okay? It's like a series of images which we uh, cycle through, also known as frames, okay? That, that's a te technical term. I'm sure you've heard that before. So basically, this is going to keep track of that. When the frame is zero, when the move frame is zero, we're basically at idle pose, okay? The pose that the player is currently on. So uh, we're going to cycle through about six images in total to actually create that move effect, okay? So let's come down here and create a new function called walking, okay? And let's just add this one little important check over here, okay? If self.moveFrame is greater than 6, then I want you to set it back to 0, okay? Because in total, we're going to have about uh, 7 frames, actually. 6 frames, okay? The first and the last one are going to be the same, okay? Because we want to start on the same pose and end on the same pose, okay? Uh, so, yeah. And we'll just return from here then, okay? So this is a, just a little important check that you need to add, because if you don't add this, because later on we're going to be incrementing the move frame, uh, we're, we're going to be incrementing move frame over here, okay? And if we don't do this, then we'll basically end up cycling forever, okay? So this is important. Okay, so what's the problem? The problem is that the player is continuing to move uh, regardless of whether the velocity is actually zero or not. So basically, even if he's standing still, the animations are still playing. So we're going to make a few changes here and we're going to use the self.running variable. Basically, what I'm going to do is that if the speed is below a certain point, we're going to set the self.running to false, meaning that he's no longer running. And if it's greater than a certain value, then we're going to say he's running. And then we'll use this state value, like uh, if, it's, if he's running or not, to determine whether the animations should be played or not. That's basically how we're going to do it. So I'm going to go to the move function, 
okay, and make a few changes. If abs, okay, abs is basically absolute, okay, it's an inbuilt function in Python that checks for the absolute value. So basically, even if the velocity is negative or positive, I just want the magnitude, okay? If abs is greater than 0 0.3, okay, then I want you to make self.running is equal to true. Else, make self.running is equal to false, okay? So basically, if the velocity is greater than 0 0.3, then make self.running true. Otherwise, make it false, okay? This will add a nice little effect that uh, we can sort of gain multiple states. We can gain a running state, we can gain a walking state, we can gain an idle state. So it's up to you how you want to implement this, okay? You can make a new, uh, a new variable like self.walking if, if you want to. Okay, so let's actually use this. I'm gonna go down here and say, and if self.jumping is equal to false, and the second condition that I'm gonna add is if self.running is equal to true. Okay, I'm going to save this, and we'll go here and see if it works. Okay, I messed up the indentation a bit, it seems, in key.prest. What did I do here? Okay, save, go back here, and let's run. Okay, okay, pretty good, but we have one slight problem. When he stops running, he sometimes stops at the wrong frame. Okay, like now. So we'll make a new check for this, and this is the last thing we need to do in this video. Uh, go to walking, and we'll add a check. If self.moveFrame, actually if self.running is equal to false, and self.moveFrame is not equal to zero, then set self.moveFrame to zero. Okay, now let's go ahead and try this. Basically what this does is that if, uh, the, if he stopped moving and the smooth frame is not equal to zero, if, if it's not set to his idle pose, then set it to his idle pose. Okay, nope, didn't work. Let's go see why. I never actually set it actually. Uh, because, okay, I need to add this in here, okay? Now this should work, this should work. Okay, uh-huh. Okay, we have a slight problem. A slight silly mistake, if you will. Uh, basically, I need to do this. I need to uh, say that if self.direction is equal to right, then I want you to... Uh, use the right animation. I forgot about that. I forgot about that for a second. Okay, uh, let's just say this properly. LF self.direction is equal to left, then use the left animation one. Because the idle poses are different, okay? There's one idle pose for the uh, left direction, one idle pose for the right direction, okay? Save and run. Okay. Okay, what's with that? Did I mix something up? Oh, I didn't change this to left, huh? Okay, okay. Now this should definitely be it. This should definitely be it. Yep, we're done. Pretty good. So yeah, we got jumping and everything pretty much. And our player movement is basically completely taken care of. Okay, that's great. So in the next video, we're going to take a look at player attacking, player attack animations and stuff. So uh, I hope you're excited for that because it's going to be pretty interesting. So make sure to subscribe so you don't miss any, any of the future videos because we've got a lot more content to cover, trust me. So yeah, uh, subscribe, leave a comment, leave a like, and let me know what you thought of this video and what you'd like to see later on. Okay, uh, thank you again and see you in a later video.